Hello students. Now it's time for us to start with the word problems. But before we start with the word problems, it is important for us to understand how to approach a word problem in the exam. How to actually approach a word problem when it comes to equation formation. Because this is where normally students find you know word problems difficult they are not able to understand the sum or form the equations but trust me it is very very easy let's go through it let's understand how exactly we need to approach a word problem now say for example there's a problem like this the sum of twice the smaller number and thrice the greater number is 19 find the numbers right now see generally what we do the mistake that we do is we see a sum and then we try to understand it a lot, you know, we just try to understand this, the sum of twice the smaller number, thrice the greater number is 19, twice, thrice, you know, it becomes a little confusing at times, right? Don't do that initially, of course it is important to understand a word problem, but initially, this is our suggestion, see it is better to start a word problem, you know, the, the problem is we don't get a start, we just don't get that approach, right? So the approach is, read the sum, Okay, initially don't try to understand anything, just read the last statement of what is asked. Like here the question is find the numbers and there are two numbers here, one is a greater number and other is a smaller number, right? So there are two unknowns, the greater number and the smaller number, right? When most of the sums of linear equations in two variables, you will be having two unknowns. What you just need to do is, assume one of the unknowns as x and assume the next unknown as y. Like here, let the greater number be x and let the smaller number be y. Just start. Read the sum. Don't try to understand anything initially. See the last statement. There will be two unknowns. Assume one of the unknowns as x and assume the other unknown as y. Now you know that in the sum, to form the equation, wherever there is a greater number mentioned, you need to replace it by x. And wherever there is a smaller number mentioned, you need to replace it by y. So greater number is x, smaller number is y. Now to form the equation, there are some basic rules that we need to follow. See, equation formation is basically what? It is converting an English statement into a mathematical equation. That's it, right? So there are simple rules to do it. Like for example, in English, if you see words like is, was, were, becomes, you just need to simply replace it with an equal to sign as you all can see right so is was were becomes to be replaced with an equal to sign right more than greater than exceeds you need to replace it by plus but after leaving some space now this is generally after the equal to sign on the right hand side after le leaving some space put a plus where it, whenever it is more than greater than exceeds now when we do the sum you will actually understand what do we exactly mean by after leaving some space right similarly less than smaller than precedes it is you know, after leaving some space, put a minus sign. Sum of two numbers, x plus y. Difference of two numbers, x minus y. Ratio of two numbers, x upon y, right? Times, twice, thrice product is multiplication. So like twice the smaller number is 2 into y. Thrice the greater number, 3 into x. It's like that, right? Also, uh, apart from these basic simple rules of converting an English statement into a mathematical equation, there are some concepts and formulae that we already know which we will have to apply while forming the equation. Like area of a rectangle, then you need to use this formula. Area of a rectangle is length into breadth, right? Perimeter of a rectangle, 2 into length plus breadth. Then speed is equal to distance upon time. Then there are certain sums where they are talking about a two-digit number. So whenever they talk about a two-digit number and you are supposed to find a two-digit number, you need to assume the digit in the tens place as say x and units place as y, then the required two-digit number will be 10x plus y because this is how we form a two-digit number from its digits. We multiply the tens place digit with 10 and the units place digit with 1. Of course, we have explained this in detail when we have uh, done the sum, right? And you can assume the tens place as x, units place as y, or you can assume the units place as x or tens place as y, right? Then whenever the sum is about uh, the fraction, never assume the fraction as x and y. Always assume the numerator as x, the denominator as y, so the fraction becomes x upon y. So these are certain tips that we are giving for, for you to form the equation, right? Now see, let's, let's form the equation here. Let's see how to apply these rules, how to convert this mathematical state, uh, English statement into a mathematical equation, right? 
Now see what is given here, the sum of, when I say sum is plus, right? So the moment you see sum, write a plus, right? Twice the smaller number, that is 2 into the smaller number, smaller number is y, so you write 2y. Thrice the greater number, thrice the greater number, greater number is x, so thrice the greater number will be 3x, is equal to 19, 19. So, 2y plus 3x is equal to 19, but we need to write it in the alphabetical order. So, equation will be 3x plus 2y is equal to 19. So, equation formation is as simple as that. What is very, very important is the start. You read the sum, read the last statement, see what is to be found out. The question is find the fraction start. Let the numerator of the fraction be x, let the denominator be y. A two-digit number sum, find the original number. Let the digit in the units place be x or tens place be x, whatever, and the units place be y or tens place be y. Any one digit you can assume as x, the other as y, so the number becomes 10x plus y or 10y plus x, right? So this is how you need to approach and then equation formation is not a problem at all, trust me, right? Now there are different, different types of word problems that uh, we will be going through in this chapter. There are word problems based on numbers, there are word problems based on geometrical figures, word problems based on age, word problems based on money and weight, and the word problems based on speed, distance and time, right? Let's start with the first type of word problems in the next module, that is word problems based on numbers.